Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to Soil Lab. Today we're going to be talking to you about the primary soil testing method we use here in the lab, and that's ion exchange resin testing. But before we get into all the technology and the ins and outs of why we prefer that method, I want to talk just a little bit about why you would even soil test. So you would soil test to help protect that investment, the investment in the seed, in those starts in your garden, in all of the soil that you've built. When you soil test, it can help direct your decisions in the amendments and the fertilizers that you choose, whether those are synthetic amendments or whether those are organic amendments. We can also help to drive the rates and timings of those applications based on when you send that test in. Another reason you might choose to soil test is to be sure you're not over applying or under applying any specific nutrient and this can lead to sustainable practices in your lawn or your garden. So if you'd like to learn more about the soil testing methodologies used here in Soil Lab that's driving data to help you make decisions, follow along. Ion exchange resin testing may seem new to us as consumers, but in fact it's been around for quite a while. The ion exchange resin testing method was first developed by Dr. Earl Scogley at Montana State University in the 90s. He was really the first one to pioneer the use of these to look at a multi-nutrient analysis, meaning that we would look at more than just nitrogen or phosphorus or potassium, but rather use one extraction method to look at several different nutrients at once. This really caught my attention and actually found it in a lot of my college textbooks in the early 2000s. And early on it really piqued my interest because I was looking at all of these research studies and all of this text and explanation that showed me that this may be a soil testing method that's more accurate and more reliable than some of the traditional soil testing methods that I was trained on early. The other thing I found interesting is that these soil resins were highly correlated with tissue test data, uh, meaning that they could be the leading indicator to tissue test values, meaning that we didn't have to wait for a deficiency in the tissue before we corrected the problem. What I want to talk about next is how this ion exchange resin technology works, how the nutrients are extracted, and maybe how that's different than our conventional soil analysis that many of us are familiar with. First, these resins are formulated in a way or developed in a way where they only adsorb the available forms of nutrients. Now, I don't want to go too far down that path, but in other words, they only absorb available phosphate in the form that plants adsorb it. They only adsorb potassium in the form that plants would absorb it, so on and so forth. And so functionally, these ion exchange resin capsules are acting just like a synthetic plant root. So in terms of sample preparation, when we soil sample, we take the soil sample, blend a composite, we take a scoop of that composite and add it to our container. That container is then shipped off to the lab, it's a, ran for a pH, and then it's extracted with one single extractant for the multi-nutrient analysis. Now that's a little bit different than our standard soil analysis. Your standard soil analysis is going to be shipped off to the lab, it's then going to be dried, it's going to be ground, it's going to be sieved to remove large particles like gravel and large pieces of organic debris, and then small portions of that sample, 5 grams here, 10 grams there, 1 gram here, are going to be pulled out and different chemical extractants are going to be used to measure different nutrient levels. And depending on what region you're living in, different extractants may be used. And that's often driven by soil pH and other regional or local characteristics of the soils. All of those variables are eliminated in ion exchange resin capsules and ion exchange resin testing because it only measures those bioavailable nutrients. It doesn't guess at the extractant to use to extract the available nutrient. So I love that about these ion exchange resin capsules. They're measuring just that bioavailable nutrient and there's not that regional specificity that we've all become so accustomed to using our standard soil testing labs. Now, if you've been using a standard soil testing lab, you can continue to use that lab, maybe supplement with a resin test. What you're going to see is that for many of those elements, they're going to trend very similarly. But for some, the standard soil test may over or underestimate uh, the nutrient value that's actually available. Well, why does that happen? Well, that overestimation may happen because certain types of clays are layered. And when an extractant is used, it might pull those layers of clay open, 
and then provide, for example, some potassium um, to, that's measurable that the plant might actually not recognize or be able to absorb. The ion exchange resins won't make that physical or chemical change to those clay particles and will only measure that bioavailable potassium. And so that's a strength that I see to these ion exchange resin capsules. Just like many of my students, you may be thinking, Matt, how is this any different than a saturated paste extract? We're using deionized water and we're measuring the solution. And it's in fact quite different than a saturated paste extract. So what are some of those differences? Well, first, a saturated paste extract, that preparation is going to be the same preparation that you have for your conventional soil analysis. So that sample is going to hit the lab, it's going to be dried, it's going to be ground, and then it's going to be sieved, and then it's going to be saturated, vacuumed through, and the solution is going to be analyzed for those nutrients. Again, that's much different than our ion exchange resin capsules where you take the field moist soil, add it in, that capsule adsorbs those available nutrients in solution, similar to the saturated paste, but it also continues to measure the release of those nutrients from the soil exchange sites. So it shows you that pounds per acre per day availability, whereas the saturated paste extract is really just a point in time measurement. And this is what allows us to develop and implement accurate fertilizer and soil amendment programs for an entire growing season. So if we just wanted to take a little bit of a break from this and take a le lesson in basic soil science, if you were sitting in my classroom today, you would have heard me talk about the three forms of, or pools really, of cations in the soil. And those are non-exchangeable cations, exchangeable cations, and soluble cations. 90 to 98% of the cations in the soil environment are non-exchangeable. Those aren't gonna be detected by the paste or the resin. Uh, where are those found? Those are inside the minerals. They're in combination with aluminum and silicon and oxygen, and they're inside of our rocks, they're inside of our clay particles, and they're unavailable for plant uptake. About one to 2% of our soil cations are in the exchangeable form. So they're adsorbed or stuck to soil particles, and another one to 2% are in soil solution. Our soil paste extract is really gonna focus in on that one to 2% in solution and miss the one to 2% largely that are on those exchange sites. Whereas the ion exchange resin capsules are gonna pick up the solution phase as well as the exchangeable cations. It's not just the total amount of nutrient in your soil that's important. It's the ability of that soil to provide those nutrients in the forms and amounts that your plant needs when it needs it. Okay, so we've decided to take a soil test to help drive our decisions in the lawn and garden. One thing that's unique is those sufficiency ranges on your soil test report and how they were developed. We have published data, and it's available to anyone, that shows you the crop uptake needs on pounds per acre per day. A great example of a crop uptake need is corn, a widely studied plant. During its peak period, and this is in high yielding corn, like over 300 bushel per acre corn, it can require up to 15 pounds of potassium per acre per day. When we use our ion exchange resins and allow those to adsorb your nutrients, we're able to correlate the, your particular soil's release and exchange of those nutrients to your crop uptake demands. There's no other technology that allows us to do this and it really gets me excited because again, then we can drive recommendations so that we're supplying exactly what your plant needs. Not too much of any given nutrient uh, and not too little of any given nutrient. Something that I mentioned earlier in the video and I'd like to get into just a little bit more is that correlation or that leading indication between resins and the tissue concentrations of these available nutrients. Our resins can act as a leading indicator and we see that in corn again, a well-studied plant. In those early growth stages of corn, we can take our resin tests and these resin tests show the bioavailable nutrients. Two or three weeks later, we can see those same trends in the soil nutrition levels, in the tissue test levels, in the corn plants. Well, what does this really mean? This means that I can amend that soil to avoid any potential deficiencies in the tissue before it's a deficiency, as opposed to taking a tissue test, recognizing I have a deficiency, and then trying to play catch up or put out a rescue treatment later on. So it's not just in corn that we've seen this leading indicator. I was really fortunate to do some grant work through the Northwest Turfgrass Association, and we were able to see that in turfgrass situations on golf course putting greens and fairways, that the resin analysis was a leading indicator to the tissue analysis to the tune of two to four weeks, depending on the nutrient as well. So this isn't corn and garden specific. This is true across cropping systems, and it's true across both man-made root zones as well as native soils.
The result of matching your crop's needs to your particular soil is that you're going to grow a healthy plant that resists pest incident, and if you're gardening, provides a plant that's as nutrient dense as possible. So when I say it's going to reduce pest incidents, it's no different than really your body or mine, right? When I'm healthier, I resist the common cold. I resist whatever's running around right now. That plant, when it's healthy, is going to better resist diseases, it's going to better resist insects, and to a lesser extent bacteria and viruses that may infect it. One good example of this is calcium, right? A lot of us probably grow tomatoes. If I'm low in calcium, then my cell walls in my plants get weak. And maybe you've seen what that tomato that looks a little rotten. We know that as blossom end rot, and that's really a nutritional issue. So when I ensure that I have that healthy, nutrient-dense plant that has plenty of calcium, it too has strong bones, and it's going to resist that blossom end rot, and it's going to resist cracking like we get in a lot of our heirloom tomatoes. Well, thanks for hanging in there with me for so long. I want to spend just a little bit of time, though, with a really a recap or a summary. So what did we learn today, or what are some of those key takeaways? So the first key takeaway is that this really isn't new technology. It just might be new to a lot of us as consumers. This technology has been around since the 90s and has proven to be very accurate and reliable through time. Another key takeaway is that this is a different tool in a toolbox. It's different than a conventional method, both in preparation, so soil sample preparation, as well as in soil analysis. I want us to all remember that if you're looking at a, so a conventional soil test, versus a soil paste extract, versus an ion exchange resin test, those are all different numbers. And although they may trend the same, the numbers aren't apples to apples, they're apples to oranges to cherries. And so use those each as their individual tools. And if what you're looking for is available nutrition, the ion exchange resin capsule is gonna be your best measurement of that. Why are these so accurate? Well, they're so accurate because they have a unique ability to only measure those nutrients that are available for plant uptake. Ion exchange resin tests are also unique in that they're able to match the pounds per acre per day of nutrient release to the pounds per acre per day of the uptake of your given crop. That's how those sufficiency ranges are developed. Another key takeaway is that these resins have proven time and time again to be a leading indicator to deficiencies that we can pick up in tissue tests, oftentimes weeks later. That two or three week period of time is going to give you the ability to amend that soil before your plant recognizes that deficiency in its tissue. This is going to help you optimize plant health throughout the growing season. So ultimately, why do I soil test? Well, it's to protect that investment that I have, whether that's in my lawn, in my garden, or in my food plot. It's also going to help to guide your product decisions and your rates. So this might help you to choose to go fully organic at these rates with these products, or it might help you go fully synthetic with these rates and these products, or what I do in my home lawn, in my home garden, and in my food plots is a blend of the two. These tests can help to drive those decisions in your lawn and your garden. Well, thanks for sticking around with me for this long, learning more about the technology that we're using here in Soil Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about these soil testing methodologies, check out the blog post that's linked below. And of course, we always appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and share if you'd like. Look forward to seeing you again in the Soil Lab.